In this video, we're going to be looking at ionic lattices. So this is very different to your covalent structures. So diamond and graphite are what are called giant covalent structures. They've got big, big structures, which is why they have high melting and boiling points, but they are all covalent bonds. This is an ionic bond given away by its, its name here. It's an ionic lattice. So this is always between a metal and a non-metal. My handwriting is terrible, I do apologise. Um, so all of the positives, they are always the metal, and the negatives are always the non-metal. So we get this alternating lattice structure where we have a positive surrounded by negatives, then a negative surrounded by positives, and it alternates, and again it makes a massive, massive structure. They have a very high melting point, oh dear, my handwriting is getting worse, and a very high boiling point. And the reason for that is that we have got these very strong forces of attraction um, between the positive and negative. So they really strongly attract each other. We call it electrostatic attraction. And that happens in all directions because they're surrounded by positives if they're negative and they're surrounded by negatives if they're positive. So ionic lattices have very high melting and boiling points. Now, one of the other things that's important to note is that if they are in a solid like this, they will not conduct electricity because the particles aren't free to move around and conduct a charge. However, if you dissolve them in water or if you manage to get them hot enough to melt, these particles all separate out and are free to kind of drift around and conduct a current. So one of the other properties linked to its structure is that they will conduct electricity if you are melting them or if they are dissolved in water. But main things to look for are the high melting and boiling point because of the strong forces of attraction. So it takes a lot of energy to break those bonds and melt them. One of the things I missed off is that obviously in an ionic bond, instead of sharing electrons, which is what happens in a covalent bond, in an ionic bond, one of the electrons moves off of one atom and goes on to another. So the metal loses electrons and those electrons end up on the non-metal. So let's say, for example, this was sodium chloride. The sodium atom will become positively charged as it loses one electron, and the chlorine atom becomes negatively charged because it gains an electron uh, and becomes a chloride ion 